So your your movie idea, you get stranded on a desert island with you and a girl that you've always had a crush on and her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You're stranded on an island. What do you do? Go. You, uh, what would you, what would Brendan do in this situation? The unspeakable. Kill somebody. You'd kill him? Yeah. Why? Because it's on an island where no one can ever find out. Because it's mm-hmm. uncharted in the Pacific Ocean. So you're going to kill him? Both of them? No, no. Just the one guy. Oh, you're going to kill the guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. To get with the girl? <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay. That's over. That's what the movie premise is, okay? <laughs> this is just this is a hypothetical movie, okay? Yeah. Of course it's a thriller. Yeah. The guy is not a good guy. Yeah. We had good casting ideas, too, for it. <laughs> no, I don't know. We can't say the casting ideas? I don't know. If it, I was just saying I don't know if it was a good casting, but go ahead, say it. Say it? I was yeah. proud of him. Yeah, say it. So for, for who I was in mm-hmm. this hypothetical when I was thinking about myself in this idea, Timothy, or wait, maybe it should be me. If not me. No, no, no. Say how he had it. We'll give it to Timothy Chalamet. Mm-hmm. And he'd be the guy that kills mm-hmm. the guy that is going out, or, or is that the girl likes on the island with him, you know? Because there's only three of them on the island. The guy that the girl likes, he would be cast. He was going to be actually... You, I think. We should make you him. Oh, no. Well, first we had Miles Teller. Miles Teller? Yeah. It and was And Miles then you Teller. had Miley Cyrus. And then Miley Cyrus yeah. as the girl. And then we later got into me. And then Timothy Chalamet kills yeah. Miles Teller. Yeah. That's the whole plot of the movie. But it all came from asking what would we do in that situation. And I was like, yeah, if I'm stranded on an island with a guy and a girl <laughs> that I really like, I'm going to have to kill that guy. Yeah, but I made it to where he li- you yeah. know they like each other. Yeah, but you point. have to kill him in a way that she doesn't know you killed him because she can't get mad at you. you, know, you gotta, it's got to be like, oh, she's grieving. She needs someone to grieve with be <laughs> there for. And you're the only yeah. other. Yeah, that yeah. Be fucked up, yeah, and then maybe at the end of the movie later she finds out. How does she find out? Dun, oh, dun, dun, dun. I do love that. Yeah, that's the real thing. She finds out. Yeah. Does she kill? M- does she kill me? And survive, or I know Miley Cyrus is the crush and all, but maybe mm. we should put someone with more acting chops for that role. I'm still so yeah, you're right. I'm still so jealous of that UFC fighter that called out Miley Cyrus. I'm like, that's so genius, dude. That's troll. I know. Level. And then apparently, she, you know how she wanted him to t- uh, put MC on his chest. Yeah. Yeah, and then he was like, I thought it was gonna go well for him. And then he's like, oh, no, you need to get a tattoo of some crazy-ass belly tattoo. And then he would hook up with her. I was like, what the fuck? This dude just bl- shot his shit. And then she put out on her Instagram, she's like, you could have had this. And it was a picture of her on her Instagram. I was like, damn, dude, you just... But, she, but she's like, you're dumb. I'm like, this dude is dumb. He's really dumb. I would have fucking done that in a heartbeat. I'd have had MC all over my body. My butthole hair is what it said, MC. It wouldn't have worked anyways. Yeah. He's saying he didn't blow his load because they're doing they're going to do some uh, donations to some charity or something. I don't know. More more to come. More to come. Well, I wish him luck. Yeah. I want to check out his podcast because apparently he has one. I forget the name of it. Cookie was talking about it. Cookie would know. Apparently he has some porn star girl with him. This huh? is an interesting podcast. Yeah, we got to check this out. We're going to – we'll find the name. What up, everybody? Episode 23, we're here. Brendan. What's up? Thanks for being here. How we doing? Doing good, doing good. Did you have a good week? I had a good week. It was nice, man. There was a lot going on. Like what? Like what? Well, (laughs) for myself, it snowed like a bitch outside. Yeah, dude. That's why I'm all bundled up right now. It's cold as fuck. And you're usually the cold one. What is happening? Dude, the snowstorm's honestly been so bad. But, like, thank God we have power, at least, I was thinking to myself. Yeah. You know, yeah. dude, do you know in Texas the power outage going oh, yeah. on right now? Oh, it's yeah. It's fucking crazy. After you texted me that night, I did learn about it. I was like, damn. And then uh, all the pipes busting and shit in people's houses. Yeah. That's why me and my dad, my dad was getting all mad at me, like, we wouldn't start a fire in the house. We would die. I'm like, dad, 
I was trying to tell him, well, you know what I would do? We would we have all that wood in the backyard. Now, this is depending on how long you're out of power and water. Yeah. How long? Right. Is it forever? Because if forever, we got a real problem. This is another movie idea right yeah. here, dude. But if it's just for like a couple months and you got some wood in your backyard, I'm like, Dad, we got no power. It's blizzards outside. I'm like, we would make, we would have to make a fire inside. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but you can't, da if you don't want to damage anything, you got to make a fire in something nice. I go, why don't we just take the fucking barbecue lid, turn it upside down, start a fire in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that fire will. Do it in the basement too, right? Yeah. And then have the heat rise up. Yeah. Or even, yeah. I mean, I guess that's what you'd crack have to do. Crack a door. Hopefully that would never happen. You can still crack like the window or something. Dude. Over two million people having to deal with that shit in Texas. That would be horrible. Yeah. It's because of the fucking ERCOT power grid. The ERCOT power grid. Get this. Yeah. That power grid is yeah. the third largest power grid mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah, I was even thinking, I'm like, maybe because it's a power grid and, like, fires and even when you just, like, see cool videos of power lines go, like, be on fire and going across, and, like, the green and shit. Mm -hmm. You're like, damn, that shit's crazy. So I guess that's the reason why. But I was thinking, why don't they just like build something around it that would help help the like seasons? Dude, it basically got overcharged. Yeah, it was because too everyone much. was putting their thermostats up. Yeah, and you know what? Texas. It they, said, they, "Fuck you, I'm out." The infrastructure in Texas was not built to handle winter like yeah. this. Yeah, which is weird. Yeah, and the crazy thing is that power grid is the third largest. Like we never thought about this. Russia is the only one in front of it, and mm -hmm. then the United States, the two other power grids that power the east and west coast mm -hmm. and all the east and west, you know. Mm -hmm. And then ERCOT over here, it stands for the fucking – you want to hear what this stands for? The Electrical Reliability Council of Texas. Mm -hmm. Reliability Council. It's not looking really reliable right now. Isn't that everything? That's, that's kind of history repeating itself multiple times with our country. Yeah. And multiple things. They should just – take the reliability out though yeah <laughs> ecot you know i was telling you know how i was telling you about the elon musk podcast with joe rogan mm -hmm. he was bringing it up again about how china is putting everything into solar power energy dude that shit scares me that shit scares me dude third largest china's yeah. behind that yeah but guess what power yeah but guess what that's like obsolete those power grids, yeah, they're go like yeah, it's gonna be obsolete. Oh yeah, yeah. I like what you're saying now. Yeah, dude, what's and that? Chi mean? And China is putting the most so, into it, so it's just time. So, yeah, that's scary. Because solar power is the way to go. That's what was so fascinating. I every time Elon Musk is on there, I love it, but because he, he's such a future-minded person, he's not. Yeah, he's got all the money in the world and all that kind of shit, but he's thinking about how can we keep people living mm -hmm. and i like that, that like thinking yeah because it's interesting dude it's very it's interesting. all very interesting man. it's such a, if you haven't checked out that podcast definitely go watch it and hopefully those people get power back dude yeah that's crazy 100 percent. i'm just a little cold and it's like yeah i get chilly now you're talking about it yeah dude yeah <clears throat> Ooh, i wanted to talk to you about uh, the Michael J. Fox interview that I saw. Oh, jeez. Dude, it hit my feelings. How bad is he? He's doing okay. He's going through some shit. He is going through some shit. And it was, I think it was a couple months ago, uh, but it was an interview on the Sunday Today show. And he was with some dude. And it was an awesome interview there because he was promoting his book. It's called uh, No Time Like the Future. And he wrote it. Ooh. Yeah, he wrote it during the pan pandemic, and he just wrote about all the things he had been going through. Um, it just hit my feels, dude. He's such an icon. You know what I mean? Childhood hero. Someone you just don't really hear about, except for with his foundation, everything that he's doing great with his foundation you hear about. But, right. And some of the yeah, – I don't really ever watch uh, – I'm not a TV show guy. You know he's on mean? TV? Yeah, he's, he came back and did some TV shows and even won an Emmy. He's won five Emmys, right? Right, that's impressive. Yeah, and one of them when he came back from uh, Rescue Me, he plays. So when he was starting to do parts, I'm kind of copying off of this uh, interview. 
but I'm just relaying the message. Go check it out. He was on Scrubs also. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, on Scrubs, he also was. No, he had a different disorder. He was yeah, he OCD. Was, in that, it. He was playing parts with disorders. You know, he's working with it. So, but yeah. What uh, what are some of your favorite Michael J. Fox movies? Oh uh, well, Stuart Little's up there. Yeah, he voices Stuart Little. That's what I'm saying. He's Stuart Little, man. It's my ch- all most of a lot of my childhood favorites are him. Stuart Little, Stuart Little too. That fucking Atlantis movie. Yeah. We used to watch it on, like in school. I'd be like, oh hell yeah, this is my shit. My obvious number one is Back to the Future, though. I know, and see that's the thing. Some pe- a lot of my friends judge me for this. Never seen them. I know, it's ridiculous. I know. They're classics. I know. Even the Wild West one, even the third All one. All of them. The, at one, two, three. Not even one of them. He has a time-traveling train. <laughs> you know, they should make another one when they're really old. Oh, I don't fuck know. It. They, fuck it. Do the whole it. thing's about time travel. Yeah. They can find someone that looks like them dudes it when they're younger. It was best when they would do it as young people, and then they would dress up old, and then dress up younger. You'd, that's the best way to do it. If we can get Keanu Reeves and that one dude back for, uh, <laughs> oh God, what is it? Keanu Reeves. Yeah, Keanu, they just remade the the third one. Lawrence Fishburne. No, <laughs> no, not, not, the <laughs> not, Ma- not Morpheus. Not, not the Matrix. Bill and Ted. Fuck. Oh, I don't yeah. know the other guy's name. Yeah, I always forget it too. Oh, I do know it. Yeah, Alex but, Winters. I know boom, his name. Boom. Bam. I know his name. But I'm saying, if we can get them to make that, come on. Let's get it like back to the future. Yeah. We could use Or wait. It. You're saying Bill and Ted, right? Yeah. You said back to the future. I know. I'm saying it. I'm saying if we can get them to make another one, we can get another back to the future. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> it is possible. Anything's possible. Yeah. But uh in the book he talks about because you know he got diagnosed with parkinson's at 29 that's so weird yeah. that and i didn't know that he married because my mom and dad loved all the shows like uh what was it spin city that mm-hmm. was when, when i was a kid they loved watching that show but i i was a little kid and it was, i don't know just wasn't my thing and another show he was on is family ties that's what i was getting ready to get into mm-hmm. that was another one they loved that again that was even way before my time our same, time. Yeah, same, yeah. And uh I never watched it. But they would watch reruns and shit, you know what I mean? And that's when he won he only won three Emmys back to back. Playing in a, his character yeah, on that show? Yeah, three in a row. And then uh he won one for Spin City and then he won his, his fifth one for that Rescue Me. So the, and then he met his wife from uh Family Ties. That's really interesting. Yeah, and they've been married and that's when I got emotional, dude, because he was like She's, he goes, she never even blinked when it came to, like, leaving him. or And she was, like, right there for him all the time. I was like, damn, that's just true love. Because, you know, he's every day is a struggle. He talks about his struggle. I want to get that book. You should. If you're watching this, go get that book. Michael J. Fox is what? If you already read the book, let me know how it is. No time <laughs> like the future. Because I'm going to get it. I'm ordering it. I want to get it. It's Michael J. Fox. And it talks about everything that he's been through. His organization, the Michael J. Fox Foundation, they're like one of the top or foundations for uh, Parkinson's. Yeah. They've found they've gotten they've raised like billions, not billions, a billion. Billions. Billions. It will be billions. Billions. But yeah, and it was cool. They were talking about how like they've come up with like seventeen therapies to do for people with Parkinson's that have never wow. re- that really have never been thought of before. So he's really pushing the forefront yeah. for that shit. Yeah, dude. He's a so, he's just fucking hero. Yeah, dude. 100%. Yeah. That's and awesome. It ma- and it just makes me sad cuz I remember when that all all that shit went down. And it was just so sad. <sighs> but oh, and another thing. He had uh, a tumor come up on his spine that he had to get surgery for and had to re- relearn how to walk. Then, like, four months after that, falls and breaks his arm. Oh, my God. Yeah. And he was talking about how, like, he didn't know how to make lemonade out of it, which was a cool – I really, like, I was like, damn, that's a really cool mindset to look at things. Like, every time something bad happens, he's like, what – how can I make lemonade out of this? You know, life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And he just really sticks with that. That's, like, one thing with him. Yeah. And he he said when he broke his arm – that he couldn't make lemonade out of it, meaning he was really sad. He was sad at himself because, like, 
his doctors always told him to be careful when he walks because like every step is crazy you know what i mean and he's like mr you know he's tough he's, he can do it he can do it and he was just kind of ups- upset with himself that he fucking did this he was alone broke his arm not being careful yeah yeah and it was like damn but he overcame it you know what i mean Dude, is there an audio book for it? Because could you imagine him doing an audio book? Yeah, dude. And, like, w- how powerful and sad that would probably, because of his voice. He too. won a Grammy for Best Spoken Word Album. Oh, my God. It's really, I got to get this now. I know. I got to check it out, too. I, didn't, I only, it was only You know what I'm video. saying? Yeah. You don't want to read it. You need yeah. to experience him read it dude, to you. He has five Ennies, four Golden Globes, a Grammy. I want to read that. Michael J. Fox is a boss. I need to listen to that audio yeah. book. That sounds cool. Yeah. You know what, else, what other Michael J. Fox movie I love? What? The Frighteners. Oh, I'm not familiar. The scary movie where, like, there's dead people and ghosts and shit. And there's, like, the spirit coming out. I'm pretty sure Michael J. Fox might be dead or might maybe, like, not dead but in uh, Purgatory or some shit. Mm-hmm. So it's it's when I was a kid is when I loved it. You've never seen The Frighteners? Mm. Dude, we got to go to the mall and get that bitch and we're going to watch it. Come to the mall and get My- that bitch. Michael J. Fox, dude, you love Michael J. Fox. That's a fucking great movie. Okay, I'll have to check it out. The Frighteners. Come on now. Come on now. Well, get, come on, give me a break here. Yeah, I just know. I'm like, man, you've seen that movie. I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> I don't remember it. I don't recall. What about Teen Wolf? I've seen Teen Wolf. Okay, okay, okay. That's all I got, though. Other than that, he's a real TV show guy. And I'm just not into TV shows. A few. A few. That's all he's got. That's He's got a good... Uh, he's, he's got, got a lot. Stuff. Oh, it's a lot. He's got a lot. That's he's cool that he lot. does all that, too. Oh, yeah. And he's, he's been nominated for almost everything he does. Anything he touches, he gets nominated. So, basically, check him out. Check his shit out. 100%. 100%. And then, boom. Today's Friday. We got fights tomorrow. Saturday. Mm-hmm. B- dude, Get this it. whole... I, let me think. There's 14 fucking fights, dude. Well, hold on. Just let me... Th- like, we... What's today? The it's, 19th? Yeah. So... It's the 19th. Until the end of March. I, I, I'm i pretty sure. Because I don't really know what's going to happen in April. But all the way until March, from right now, we have amazing fights. Mm-hmm. Just stacked. All of them. Dude, the fights We're going to be busy. Good, man. We're going to be busy. It's going to be a busy, fun year. I want to get into sports betting, but I'm like, no, I can't. You were doing pretty good on yeah, those parlays. Dude. Yeah, dude. Boys. I'm like, ah, oh, don't do it. Don't do it. You shouldn't do it. Yeah. Because you'll have bad nights, too. Yeah, I know, and it'll piss me off. I'm not a big... I'm just not a gambling man. Yeah. I'm just not. If we go to Vegas, I'll, like, fuck around with 20 bucks. And if I win anything, I win anything. If I lose it, I lose it. So we're going to hear your picks tonight, though. Yeah. But, dude, some music dropped today. Yeah. A lot. Six nine. Your boy's back. Your favorite artist. Yeah, 6 9 he's got... Yeah, I wouldn't fuck with 6 9 dude. He's crazy. <laughs> he's a crazy dude. What do you think of his tattoos? New tattoos. He has new tattoos? He has so many tattoos, I didn't even know he had more. Yeah, all the... F- he's covered now. I thought you saw the music videos. I thought he was always covered. He was, but now he's all colorful wow. and even way more tatted. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. You always tell me you're, he's, your, <laughs> he's your favorite artist. I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. That. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you used to love him. What happened? I still love him, yeah. What happened? It's still, he still has some uh, that those energy of the songs. Do you know what Zaza means? I, pizza. I've recently. <laughs> 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 I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, mama, where's the Zaza? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. I just What's learned this mean? rap ter- rap terminology right now for all you folks out there that don't know. Zaza, drum roll, means good weed. Oh. Just really good weed in the rap Pass game. me the Zaza. Yeah, and you know who I first heard? Well, you know, maybe there's some other rap songs I just never, like, thought, like, just never Who were the other rappers? But the first rapper that I thought of, and I kind of thought, oh, is Takashi taking jabs at this guy, maybe? Because he's an upcoming rapper. Who also had an album drop today? CJ. Yeah. Who did the whoopty. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I'm smoking the Zaza. I'm going to go straight to the Mada. We're going to get canceled for that. Is he or is he actually blowing it up and he's supporting it? I don't know. By throwing it in there Takashi, in the you know vernacular. In that song Zaza, Takashi's going after everybody. It's a death wish. That's what that song is, dude. 
I gotta listen to it again. Dude, he's I was too distracted. There was like just asses. He's talking everywhere. about a guy. He's going crazy. He's talking about a guy's cousin getting killed, and talking shit to him about it. Dude, it's time to click clack, clickety clack Get clack back and click clack. Yeah, I want my Kit Kat. Cause I stay strong. Cause I'm a big snack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll stop there, guys. We're sorry about that, and we're back. Okay, <laughs> but. I thought it was a high. I'm six nine as a person, huh, huh. But mm. his music, it's hype. It's fun to get hype to. I understand that. And just have fun with, and it's hype. It's fun making videos too, hype videos. Yeah. So. I can respect that. Yeah, that's the only reason why I get down to some six nine. It does hype you up. Yeah, and the shit talking. I'm. He keeps things interesting. Uh yeah, I agree. I respect it. He's bold. Yeah. He's a bold character, man. Yeah, it's dangerous. I, yeah. Would I be like that? No. You got to respect his craft, dude. No. And then your boy Trippy dr- dropped a new album with 40 fucking songs. Yeah, I got to check that, that out. That dude's a workaholic, dude. Trippy? Because mm-hmm. he drops album after album after album and they're loaded. Well, do you think it's because if he doesn't work, he'll do something bad or something? And he's like, I man, know. I got to stay working. I think or he maybe just I'll slip it. into some bad habit or something. Maybe. I think he just loves the grind. Oh, yeah, just love- like Floyd Mayweather just constantly working out. You think he could be addicted to work? He has to be, hundred percent. A workaholic. You have to be, you have to be. Yeah, that's an interesting. I really liked that pull. Pillbreaker song with him, MGK, and dude, Black he's Bear. A, he kills. Yeah, Black Bear's uh, turning on me. I'm starting to become a black. It's just he's been in in there for a while. Yeah, I remember the Fat Nick song, way long time ago. I was like, wow, this guy just works with everybody. This is interesting. Yeah, uh, Fat Nick. That's Fat Nick's character. awesome. He's killing it with him and Puya. Mm-hmm. I love them guys. There's so many different rap names. It's awesome. Yeah. Puya, Fat Nick, Zilla Kami. Zilla Kami. Who's crazy? I love Zilla Kami. He's crazy. That should people would like. You listen to that, Ricky? And I'd be like, yeah, dude. I do. Honestly, rest in peace, Juice World. What a, a dope name. I know. What a dope name. And honestly, dude, that song with uh. Trippy Red that they just released like a week or two ago. Yeah. What was it, the name of it? Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't remember. Is it a legit song or are they just taking snippets from other songs? I feel like they're taking snippets from other songs. Because there is some bars that Juice World spits in that and song. And then that's the right though. And it's part. like, oh, my God. Juice World kills it. It just makes me so sad that that dude's in a grave. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. He shouldn't be there. No, he shouldn't. We should have like a thousand more songs by now. Him, Lil Pete. People hate on me for well, not hate on me, but there is a good. I do have. A, I'm starting to get more people, friends, who are Lil Peep fans. It makes me happy. Yeah, Lil Peep's good. Yeah, well, I have a lot of friends who don't even give him a try, and they're like, "Oh, you listen to that sad shit," and I'm like, uh, "It's good." <laughs> Yeah, I like the beats too. It's like yeah. it's some rock star vibes too. Dude, it. Juice World kills it, man. R.I.P. Juice World. Now I'm sad, but yeah, Yellow Wolf dropped another album. I haven't listened to it yet. It's called Black Sheep. Or have made... you seen the dude that he's rolling with? It's I think his name is Caskey. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Have you seen this guy? Yeah, he looks crazy. Uh, I'm pretty sure they collabed with the whole album. I haven't. I gotta go listen to it. My buddy James told me. You to You wanna check talk it out. about tattoos? Yeah. He's got a whole freaking snake yeah. tattoo. Dude, if on we, his head, it help he looks us. Ter- he looks crazy. Help us become and the like, number one pod, guys, and I'll be just like that. It'd be bad, dude. That would be insane. I would. Yeah. I'd always be like this, looking at you. If you I'd have face you, tattoos. If I'd have like, tattoos. I'd just be like, I'm bald. I'd be like, I'm bald. If we became famous and rich, I'm gonna take care of everybody. I'm gonna get some tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just. I would just be like, yeah. what'd you think of? Uh, What's his name? Getting the forehead diamond in uh, little Uzi Vert. Getting the diamond in his forehead, the twenty-four million diamond. I One- mean, you know what? He's hey, guess what? That's who he is, uh, dude. He don't yeah. stop for anybody. I thought it was like some Yu-Gi-Oh type shit. Do I agree with it though? No. Yeah. But I respect it. There was one rapper who has a tear, a teardrop as a diamond. He's like, oh, he's copying off of me. <laughs> like, oh shit, dude, that's commitment. I know, dude. Like, why? Like, so is it, like, permanent? You can't um, take I out would the imagine. diamond? There was this a video. I don't know how, if it was really real. That's crazy. But there was this video of uh, fans giving Little Uzi Vert shit because they were like, oh, look, it's wobbly. Like, if it was loose or something. I'm not sure. That's but I'm like, if you got in a fight, 
if some dude just robbed you and got on top of your ass with no one around and just pulled that fucking thing off your forehead, A, ow, mm -hmm. and B, you're out $24 million. Damn, that's 100%, dude. <coughs> That'd be tough. I don't know. So, would you do that if you got rich? Would you get diamonds implanted in your face? Never. I don't think so. Never. Well. Do I respect it? What if, I, what if they don't give a fuck? But dude. guess what, Brennan? What if that's like tattoos? Because back in the day, someone's like J permanent tattoo. I would never fucking do that. And now look, everyone's got tattoos. Yeah, so what if? What if? In I don't have a problem with anyone getting diamonds on their faces. Oh, I know. But what if in like twenty five years from now, everyone's got fucking diamonds in their face? I'm gonna be like, man, shit's changed. The shit has changed. <laughs> I'd be like. You do you, <laughs> yeah. But shit has changed. Next, we know bitches got like diamonds in their wrists. I'd be like, damn, <laughs> they're like turning into cyborgs. Everyone would be. I mean, are we already cyborgs, phone in hand? Bro. Dude, the way Elon Musk is talking, shit, dude. He's afraid of AI, which worries me. And did you know that there is apparently he's? I haven't looked at it because I don't want to because I'm gonna go down a fucking ra rabbit hole if I do. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about there's this Facebook site called Facebook AI group where they're actually taking all the information and feeding it to an ai just to see what happens and like he that doesn't sound like a bad idea yeah and well what i respect about elon is he's for all the regulators or like the adc ads all that shit there's so many of them adc i'm gonna say it wrong the sba gfa the dcf pc all that yeah. there's a lot of them and he's for all that, for the rules, for everything to get done correctly, to make sure it's done safely. You know what I mean? Think about this: to 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 destroy your to destroy your enemy, you must become uh. become your enemy. Dude, you just made reminded me of another thing. But hold on, he, Elon Musk is for regulators. You know what I mean? Well, there's groups out there because Elon believes that if it if it potentially can harm the public, then the public should know about it. Mm -hmm. Well, there's things out there happening where we won't where we really don't know about it could have potential harm. And you know what he talked about with uh, Terminator? We yeah. love Terminator so much. I T love Terminator. T T T Terminator 2. Yeah. Well, you know what the premise of Terminator is? You know what it is. Yeah. A guy has to go back in time to kill the chosen one that's going to stop the robots from taking over. Yeah, but do you know why the robots are taking over? Why Skynet takes over? Yeah. Because the AI turns on the people and they launch all the nukes, right? Because why? My boy's a genius, folks. I know he knows. Is it because he realized that humanity was doomed already? I forget. Elon Musk shouted out. Is it J? I forget. Is it J.J. J. Abrams or is it uh, James Cameron? James Cameron. James Cameron. Sorry, J.J. J. Abrams. Way later in time. Still a G. James Cameron. I'm sorry I disrespected you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Take shots at J.J. Yeah. Abrams. But he gave, uh, Elon Musk gave him credit for writing such a smart screenplay. Because he said that Skynet, uh, the computers, were designed uh, to protect humans from everything, right? Mm -hmm. As, like, a safety protocol for, like, pretty much kind of, like, kind of what we're going into in the future with, like, what people post, make, do, everything kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, something happens and the, pe the people are like, oh, you're bad for us. You need to destroy yourself. And then the computers are like, we're not the bad, we're not bad, the humans are bad. Mm -hmm. So then they're like, well, no, that's when we're going to kill, we're going to kill all you guys. I'm like, oh, fuck. And then he was like, that's too close to home. I'm like, oh, shit, dude. So maybe we're going to invent something that could just turn on us. Terminator 2 might be, or Terminator might be the real fucking deal. You were thinking, I feel like we're thinking too black and white. There's going to be assimilators. Uh -huh. There's going to be those AI, like, uh, slaves probably, you know? Oh, dude. That are, like, on their, like, loyalists or yeah. something. And they're going to get, like, AI enhancements to give them an edge. Uh -huh. And their families are going to be the ones that are going to be, like, the powerful people oh, of dude. the select few. Have you listened to these podcasts? Mm, oh, I have to check dude, them out. Dude, if you want, dude, you, you, I think you'd really like them. Because if you kind of sometimes if you want to get freaked out about like AI or something, he's the guy to listen to. Yeah. Because he his like, and when you hear it from a guy like Elon Musk, it's just like oh god. Because that the shit he knows. Yeah, like, the shit he knows. And the people he talks to. Yeah. He kind of got a little offended on Joe Rogan, and I loved it because Joe was like, 
oh, well, because people were upset about how he wanted to put implants in our brain. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is coming from the guy who wants to put implants in our brain. And Elon Musk kind of comes back real quick wittily. And he's like, well, yeah, that means I should know a lot about brains. I would know a lot about our brains. And it was kind of like, wow, yeah, give the guy what credit. Kind of response he sh- is that? Well, like, give the guy credit. He should know something. Don't think he's going to do something so, like, crazy if he doesn't know anything about it. He's like a doctor. If you go into a doctor, I've done it. I've done it. Oh, hey, doc, you know, I, I think I might have this because I looked it up online. And they get offended. I've heard my doctor, well, well, why do you need me You're the, if you're the doctor, you know? Dude, Elon Musk is a massive manipulator. He manipulates the damn stock market. <laughs> he says a tweet that about Dogecoin boom, it went up True. like that. He that guy's power. He has power. His little kid could be a robot. Power. Is his kid even human? I want a DNA. I want proof. I need to see it bleed. Yeah. That dude can <laughs> say something and literally change the outcome of billions, man. Like, it's fucked up. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Go check out his podcast. If you guys haven't yet, they're really good. I love Joe Rogan's podcast, man. They're so great. And then I, I do lo- like Logan Paul's, you know. And oh, he, Impulsive? Yeah, but guess 100%. what? Yeah. He's moving out of – I don't know if you've seen his recent podcast – Probably not. He's moving out of fucking Los Angeles too, and they're all kind of sad about it. They might not do the. They might not keep it going. Really? Yeah. And apparently he just really? dropped seventy G's on that new set, which looked good. Seventy G's. Yeah. On the, he has a new wood. Like it, the background looks cool and everything. Mike Tyson came on the pod, talked some shit. Logan Paul had to change it up. Yeah. But now, and guess where he's moving? Where is he moving now? Fucking. Uh, is it Texas? No. <laughs> He uh, he looked at Texas and Florida, fucking. What North, is North Dakota? It's one of the islands, not Jamaica. Uh, Puerto Rico. He's moving to Puerto Rico. Yeah, like R- what if you die? Real? He's he's really moving yeah. to Puerto Rico. I'm pretty sure it was Puerto Rico. I hope to God I didn't fuck that up. Well, who knows who he knows there? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Why would he move there? In the ca- unless he knew a lot. Ta- of they people. were saying taxes, to save money on taxes. I wonder why it's really extreme. I know. I really wonder why he didn't go to choose Florida to go with be with his brother and everything. Well, he's really into boxing. Yeah, and he does love birds. And dude, I think there's a pretty good boxing community. Yeah. Oh God, yeah, dude. So who knows? What if he's really training his ass off to wreck Ben Askren? Isn't that the fight? Well, that's Jake Paul. Oh my God, you're talking Logan Paul because Logan Paul from it's okay. The world forgives you. From Impulsive. Yeah. Logan Paul is supposed to fight Floyd Mayweather, but it got put on hold. So is their set going to be in Puerto Rico? That Well, he was, no, they were talking about um, Mike and the other guy that they do the pod with. They were talking about how they just might try and figure out a way to keep it going with, like, maybe him on Skype or Zoom in his seat. Mm-hmm. Then they were, you know, I was always, people told me that we should do our podcast and put it on, uh, uh, What's that fucking thing that Joe Rogan? I hate it. I hate. I hate it. It's just what Joe Rogan just went to, and it's what we want. Spotify. Watch. Spotify. So that you know, make it audio only and shit like that. Because apparently, a lot of people just listen to audio only. Because Logan Paul and them were talking about it. I just fucking hate Spotify. I watch my Joe Rogan from my PS4, and you can't get the video of the vi- the podcast. So it is only audio if you watch it from your PS4. And I like to watch the conversation. Audio experiences aren't aren't bad though. Think about this: oh, yeah. when you're in your car and there's like or, a Dane Cook. Oh yeah, exercise uh, and it just anything. takes you back, and it's hilarious. Oh yeah, you know, like yeah. a random comedy. Oh yeah, uh, but I do like to I do like to visualize this as well. I get you. Yeah. But I think if you're on the run and or you gotta go somewhere. Another thing with podcasts, like people, especially in like a Joe Rogan podcast, when he has those people on there. Sometimes they're bullshitting. Sometimes they're like out talking out of their ass and they're really like putting on a front. I got to see their face. I got to see how they're saying stuff. You know what I mean? Because if I listen to it, I might judge it differently if I'm watching it. Oh, I might be like, 100%. oh, I don't really know if I like this guy or if I'm believing this guy. This guy's bullshit. And then Joe, you might get Joe's vibes by seeing his the way he's vibing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whereas you might not you can get it by tones and the voices if you're listening, but you might not get it as well if you want that's kind of why. Think about dudes with diamonds in their faces, man. <laughs> yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's dive into these fights before let's get it. Cuz we we got a lot of fight talk. 
But uh, I wanted to talk to you about some upcoming fights that they just announced. That was pretty exciting. Oh, give it There's to me, five man. of them, dude. So we got Gregor Galipsy versus Brad Riddle. My boy, Gregor Galipsy. Oh, good luck. So, in the, it, dude, again, March. Just fucking stacked. It got added to the March 20th card. which is And they're all in Vegas. Oh, oh I want to. He's getting played oh. like a fiddle by my boy, Brad Riddle. Oh, damn. I wish I had a fiddle. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Gregor Galepsi, you're silly. He's 13-1. and 13-2. and two, He man. hasn't fought since the Kevin Lee fight, which was 15 months ago. It's been a long time. Yeah. Maybe he's been focused, getting ready. Getting knocked out like that, you need time off to heal your fucking brain, get refocused, come back. I respect a layoff like that when it's – oh huge horror god that knockout was so fucking gross it was a good knockout oh. kevin lee has skill man he just gets beat by really good guys oh, oh yeah kevin lee's an animal he gets beat by good guys kevin lee's an athlete yeah. he's legit and that head kick was just nasty anyone could have got dropped by that oh yeah oh yeah anyone oh poor gregor galefsi's soul and then he landed his punches oh, on the follow-up oh, oh my god he got wrecked yeah wrecked gregor galefsi Oh. Got wrecked. Got wrecked. Dude, I'm sorry for your boy. He's going to lose again. He's going to be 13 and 2. Who's he fighting? Brad Riddle? That's Brad right. Quake Riddle. Quake. You're going to make him a That's quake. his nickname. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, he's 13 and 1. And then uh, Brad Riddle's 9 and 1. He's got six wins by KO, uh, five wins by submission, two wins by decision. So he can do it all. He last beat Yancey Mirandos. I forget. I think that's how you say it. By TKO punches. So he's coming off a win. Gregor's coming off a loss. 13-1 versus a 9-1. It's going to be 10-1. and one. <laughs> You're going with your, Brad, your boy Brad Riddle? <laughs> Brad Riddle all day. 10-1 coming up. All right. I'm going with Gregor. I'm going with Gregor. Yeah. He's going to get a, s- a, six or a six knockout. I'm just excited for that fight because I'm, I'm a fan of Gregor Gillespie. He's cool. And then they announced today that uh, Tyron Woodley versus Vincent LeCue added to the UFC 260 already stacked fucking card. That is cool. Tyron Woodley, dude. This is where I respect I respect Woodley. Dude, three-fight losing streak. And he's fighting a guy like Vincent LeCue. I know. That is crazy. Even, even the three losses, every one of them are tough guys. Colby, Gilbert, Kamaro. Kumar- Damn. It's not like he's losing the scrubs. He's losing to the best of the best. And he's getting he's gotten beat pretty bad, but he's uh, a, he's one of the best, dude, for he, sure. Woodley's 19 and 6. 7 TKOs, 5 subs, 7 decisions. I hope he beats him. I got Tyron. Man. Vincent LeCue, 19 and 7. Notable wins. Ready for this? Nico Price, Mike Perry. Oh, Jesus. Bilal Muhammad. Yeah, oh my god. Chad LaPrise, Brian Barberina. Is it finishes too? Oh yeah. Oh my God. Bilal, Bilal, the guy that's going, that's doing well, pretty, doing pretty good I right know, now. Yeah. Ko, Chad LaPri- LaPrise, Ko. Nico Price, Ko. Nico Price, TKO, Doctor Stoppage. Yeah. Dude, and oh then, my God, Tyron, be yeah. careful. I know. And then Mike Perry decision split. Well, yeah, yeah. He's on a two fight win streak. Yeah, last one against Randy Brown, Ko. Tyron's winning by decision. And Vincent McHugh's loss to Wonderboy, Leon Edwards, and Michael Graves on the Ultimate Fighter. Whatever happened to Michael Graves? I forget. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Michael who? But he lost to Wonderboy and Leon Edwards, so if he's, if he's lost to people, it's really good guys. I just don't know if I see this a good being an out, good outcome for Mr. T. Wood, our boy. He's going to get a decision win. He's Unanimous. Gonna, he's going to get this one back? Mm-hmm. He's a fucking corner. He's gonna grapple animal. wrestle him, man. He's gonna not be ready for that. When guys are three and oh and three, man, and they're putting in a corner, they're dangerous. They can be dangerous. There's they can either be destroyed or they can be dangerous. We'll see a lot in the first round on how strong he is compared to yeah. LeCue. So who you got? I'm going with Tyron Woodley by Tyron unanimous w- decision. Dude. Unanimous he's gonna decision? he's gonna win every round, thirty twenty seven. It's gonna be Fuck, a smart I, fight. I don't know if I can pick that yet. It's gonna be a smart fight. My head's telling me Vincent, but I want, I want T Wood. We'll come back to that another day when it gets closer. All right, talking about Bilal Al Muhammad, he still got he. Uh, guess what? Short notice came up replacing Hamzat. 
against uh, Leon Edwards. Oh my god! Yeah, March thirteenth. So four weeks after his after he just fought, and he's stepping up against Leon Edwards. Which dude, Leon Edwards, you got to give this guy respect because he's on a eight fight win streak. Ready for this? Gunnar Nelson, Donald Cerrone, I don't know Peter Sabuta. I forgot. The, I forget that guy. Mm-hmm. Brian Barbera, Vincent Lequeu, uh I, f- I forget Albert Tremorov and Dominic Waters. But eight wins, all the same. Eight wins in man. the UFC. Yeah, and especially. Oh yeah, and uh, he um, before Gunnar Nelson RDA. Yeah, come on. And it, but it hasn't. It's been since 2019. So it's been a little bit. And he got punched in the face by Masvidal and got I split know, open. Dude. That's the that's who should have stepped in, but hmm. Pussy. Oh god. Masvidal will fly to my house. Yeah, and just dude, kick me. your ass. I'm sorry, Masvidal. I'm but sorry. I think he gets way too much praise by yeah, like, everybody. There's there I, I don't know. I think it should have been Leon Edwards and Masvidal. I don't know why. I love it. But it's just because Usman wants to fight Masvidal. Love now. it. I yeah. think it's a great idea. Why I don't know. I think Usman should have said Leon Edwards. Because he, the guy deserves it. I know he hasn't fought in forever, but I just feel... And to take on a guy like Blah Muhammad who's looking really good. I know. Why? It's such an... Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 100%. It's a risk. That's it a is. risk. It's a bullshit risk. Uh. Um, And I give Bilal credit because he just took all that leg damage, and now four weeks later he's going to fight Leon Edwards. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of risky. If, if, he wins the, if he wins that fight, that's huge. That's a huge win for him. 100%, dude. So, right now, I'm going Leon Edwards. Who do you got? You know what? I, is it Maha, Malau? Bilal. Bilal. Oh, my gosh. Bilal. I know, dude. I'm so bad at saying names, dude. It's okay. I'm we're saying getting, We're getting better. We're getting better. I'm saying Bilal's going to win. You're saying Bilal Muhammad? He Bilal looked- Muhammad's going to win by a first-round TKO. He's on a four-fight win streak, I think. Yeah, Diego Lama, Lyman Good. Kashi Soto and Curtis Melinder. That's all I needed to hear. And he's lost to <laughs> the f- three people that are noticeable that he's lost to is uh, Giroff Neal, Vincent McHugh, and a guy that you forgot about, Alan Jermaine, who's now a commentator. I completely was stunned that you forgot who Alan Jermaine was because I liked him. He was, I was in the past. Oh, I know. He, I liked him. Though. He had a good time. All right. This one's exciting. You already know. You already know. I'm in it. What's it? Sean O'Malley, baby. Versus Tomatoes Alfredo. Tomatoes Alfredo. Oh, yeah. I love that. Alfredo. Tomatoes Alfredo. Alfredo, because he's afraid. So Sean's just been on a tear, busting everybody up. He was fucking busting up Cheeto. And then, like, the, the TV went, we'll be, quite, we'll be right back. And now here we are. They were returning. And now he's fighting Tomatoes Alfredo. And here's the thing. Everyone's like, oh, this is a gimme fight for Sean O'Malley. What? A gimme nope. fight? Yeah. That's some bullshit. It's not, it, it is. It is bullshit. Thomas Almeida is a respectable fight. Right? Although it's funny, the Tomatoes Alfredo, Alfredo is a great nickname. Yeah. But like, we're just having, that's good, just fun talk. He is a good fighter. It's not like I'm going, oh, fuck Thomas Almeida and his wife and his family. I'm not saying any of that kind of shit. I'm <laughs> yeah. just making fun of his name. Like, right. It's fun shit talk. Tomatoes Alfredo. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. It, it's clever. I, oh. Yeah. I, I thought Thomas, and then I was like, oh, take tomato. Uh, well, he's a, he he's was like, a, he, he didn't sign. There's something, there was some kind of contract or something. He was supposed to, they were going to fight, and then something happened, and it took a little bit, and then they finally, he did finally sign the contract. So I was like, oh, he's afraid. And I was like, ooh, tomatoes Alfredo. What if he was Alfredo. like, what if he was like, my dad was allergic to, ma- to tomatoes, and he, <laughs> and and he died. died in front of me. I'd be like, Thomas, eating I'm so a sorry. tomato. I'd be like, Sean, please be his ass, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? But here's the thing, dude. I'm listening. What's up? So Thomas Almeida, he's on a three-fight losing streak. And here's the thing. I give Sean credit, dude. He The Cheeto fight, everyone thought he won against Yudong Song or Yong Sedong, Sedong Yong Wadong. Mm-hmm. But he didn't. He lost. Mm-hmm. Sean gave him the fight. That's respect. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Again, now he's fighting a guy. on, f- And that's scary when a guy's coming off a loss. Cheeto was coming off a loss. Mm-hmm. He was gonna. He, he's coming with everything he had, and Sean's ready to fucking whoop some ass. That's that's someone needs to deserve that credit. Sean deserves that credit because mm-hmm. you're coming on taking danger, and now here you are again, Thomas Almeida. 
0 and 3. Yeah, he's dangerous. Cornered. Fucking danger. So, and listen to this, dude. Let's go through this. Let's go through this. Okay. He's got nine fights in the UFC. He last lost to Jonathan Martinez in October 2020, Rob Font in 2018, Jamie Rivera in 2017. So in j- fucking three years, he's fought three times. You know what derailed his career? What? Co- remember the Cody Garbrandt knockout? He was fucking... Before the Cody Garbrandt knockout, he was 21-0. and 0. Really? Yeah. He had knocked out 10 guys in a row. He had 10 knockouts in a row. He was 21-0, fights Cody Garbrandt, gets knocked the fuck out, and he's had a fucking hard-ass time ever since. And that happened in 2016. And ever since then, he's just had a hard, it's just like, hasn't really recovered. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a shame. It is a shame. It happens. It happens. At the same time, we hope he gets wrecked this fight. Oh, yeah. So, well, Sean's too fast. In my opinion, Sean's too fast for him. Uh, Sean's been working on his jiu-jitsu game every day. He's always grinding his jiu-jitsu game. So it's like, Thomas, go to the ground. Shoot on Sean. Watch what happens. Sean's going to tower over Almeida. You'll see it at the weigh-ins. Yeah. You're like, damn, Sean's way bigger than Almeida. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, go to the ground with Sean. And I know Tim gives Tim gave me a little bit of shit because I was kind of you know it size doesn't matter when it comes to jujitsu I know that I know it's all about experience and everything I would get wrecked by some little people who are way black belts in jujitsu they would wreck me but I just want to be the big boy and I want to be like no they wouldn't in my head you know I'm not I'm not gonna let this little person take me down that's fine you know what I mean yeah yeah so that's just the way I think it will be with Sean go ahead try and fuck with Sean on the ground he's got you he's got you. So, yeah, Sean's too fast. Thomas can get knocked out. Sean's going to knock out Thomas Almeida. It'll be in the first round, too. I'm going to say first round, two and a half minutes. They're both in the UFC game. We're going to have to boot it up and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. He's, your boy's got some crazy-ass kicks, too. He's got some fun-ass movesets on that game. Honestly, oh, yeah, dude. Dude, dude and it's hard. they're kind of hard to learn. Yeah. You know, like it's hard to time it. Yeah. Dude. He just makes it look so easy. You're like, what the fuck? All right, no, I'm not praising. I'm no more being on Sean's dick tonight. Yeah, yeah. It, it was Sorry. fun talking about the video game there. Uh, shout out, Sean. You're going to do work. You're going to fuck yeah, him you up. Yeah, you got it. You I was pretty it. excited when they finally – UFC put it on their page today. I was like, fuck yeah, let's go. Let's fucking go, Thomas. Tomatoes <laughs> Alfredo going to sleep, baby. All right. Next, Derek Brunson versus Kevin Holland. Boom, March oh, 20th. Love Another it. one. March fucking 20th, dude. March is just so fucking stacked. Derek Brunson, 21-7. Kevin Holland, 21-5. and five. <sighs> Kevin Holland all day. Kevin Holland? He's been dude, killing it. Dude. That guy's a killer. Dude, Derek Brunson can shut down the hype train real quick, dude. He can shut it down real quick. Yeah, he gets shut down real quick. He's on a three-fight win streak. Just beat Edmund Shabazi and TKO. Shut that down. Shut down Ian Heinish. Shut down Elias Theodoro. Dude, come on. He's not shutting down Kevin Holland. You don't think so? Mm-mm. So here's the kind of thing that people kind of forget about. Kevin Holland's been around for a minute. He's just reinvented himself in 2020 with that five fight back to back, back, back to back, back to back. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? So it's really interesting. You know he came from Dana White's contender series? That's crazy. Yeah. And look in at two, him now. 2018. And you know after the contender series, he fought Diego Santos in middleweight. Dude. Oh, my God. Tiago Santos is going to have a good fight in the future coming up, too, man. Yep. He lost to Santos. Understandable. Won three fights, which one of them was GM3. Oh, yeah. Gerald Mearnshart. Marshart. Mearnshart. And then uh, he lost to Brendan Allen. After the Brendan Allen, boom, 2020 happens. He's on a five-fight win streak. Biggest fight of his win was against the uh, croc. What is the alligator? Zosa. Yeah, Ronaldo Souza. Oh my god, he freaking knocked him out off his back, dude. Yeah, dude, that was insane. That was the biggest win of his career. So you think that's gonna beat Derek? Derek Bumson. Bumson. He's gonna get wrecked. Yeah, Kevin Holland all day. So, dude, Derek Brunson's fought everybody, man. The people. So look at these losses. He lost to these guys. Izzy, Souza, 
<laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Anderson Silva, Robert Whitaker, Yo Romero. All beasts. I know. I know he just beat Crocodile. Kev- what? Kevin Holland beats him. It's you huge. give him a it's big, big shot. A big a bigger name. Mm-hmm. Another bigger name. I'm going Derek Brunson. I think he's gonna shut the, the hype train down again. Brendan, we got some good fights this weekend, brother. Hell yeah, we do. Just like the, for the fucking next like six weeks, Jesus. I know it's I nonstop. Can't, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. Just nonstop. Just nonstop. There's 14 freaking fights coming up, man. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Some fighters missed weight. There was a guy, um, I forget who, off the top of my head. Um, I threw him out. You know, I said I'm not gonna, ha- I'm not gonna know about this fight anymore. Oh, but he missed yeah. by like 14 pounds. Oh my god! And then there was three other people that missed weight. That's a lot to be off by. I forget. I should have wrote down which ones. I forget which ones missed weight. It wasn't Blades or Lewis. They made weight. Right. Cole main main weight. But yeah, let's start off with the prelims, dude. Let's go down with this. Let's do our predictions. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got. We're it. gonna do our UFC fight night: Blades versus Lewis predictions. The night starts off with the prelims. It's a heavyweight bout. Sergi Spivak, 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 mm-hmm. Spivak, Spivak, yes, versus Jared Vendera. Hmm. Mm. All right. So, so they got close records too. They do. Eleven and two. So Sergi's eleven and two. Jared's eleven oh. and four. Uh, Sergi's two and two in the UFC. Uh, last beat Carlos Felipe in July. Uh, he's got. Four wins by TKO and KO, six by submission, one by decision. And he's got losses by one KO, one decision. So he's a submission guy. He's got a little bit of knockout shit. Jared, he's from the Dana, another guy. So another guy from Dana White Contender Series. He won by TKO on there. It's his first fight since. Mm -hmm. He's got seven wins by TKO, three by submission, one by decision. He's got two submission losses and two decision losses. It's okay. It's okay that yeah. you said it like that, but it's okay. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Are you, guess what else he got? What? He got a two inch reach on our boy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. Okay. Guess what? Two inch reaches can make a difference. Two and two versus a uh, one fighter. Hmm. I got Jared. You know them Dana White contender series people. They're just they're something else. It's the new breed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think on this fight, I'm going to go with Jared as well. By KO. Damn. Me too, actually. You think you too? Yeah, third round. Third round? Mm-hmm. TKO. TKO. Heavyweights, first round. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are big boys. You're yeah. right. I we'll don't see. know, though. I'll stick with what I said. Sergi's 11 too. He's only been knocked out once. Well, he's going to get it. He can get it again? Yeah, he's going to get it. All right, Jared's getting him. All right, next, a Bantamweight matchup. matchup. Eamon Zahabi versus Draco Rodriguez. Now, Draco is boys with Sean and all them guys. Mm -hmm. So I got to go Draco automatically. I actually had Draco, too. And it seems cool. Seems like he's younger ass. too. He's twenty four. Our he's boy Amon. Amon's thirty three. And seven and two. The bo- uh, another close. Both two records are close again. Thirty three is kind of a peak age a lot for a lot of athletes. 30, you, you know what I'm saying? You Sometimes you do got to be careful. Yeah, yeah. You're your prime at thirty three. So a twenty four young buck shouldn't be overlooking him at the same time. Hundred percent. Well, he's one. Uh, so, Amon Zahabi. He's one and two in the UFC. Last loss to Vincent Morales. Morales. Yeah. I'm not saying. All right, so he's got four wins by KO, TKO, two by sub, and one by decision. He's lost by TKO and by decision. Okay. So the guy, so Draco, another guy from Dana White's Contender Series. Uh, he beat Lamana Martinez. <laughs> don't remember him. I don't remember the fight either. Mm. I feel bad. It's okay. There's so many fights. There's so many fights, dude. I know. I got to, it's, it's, I'm like, is it me getting older and there's just, Getting overwhelmed with all these fights. There's so many all the time. Yeah, there is a lot more fights nowadays. Well, Cookie reminds me of a younger me. When I first got in the UFC, I could I was like a sponge. I could remember every single thing. You know what I mean? I've kind of lost it. I want to get it back. I want to get it back. Yeah. Cookie inspires me. Yeah, he's an idiot. He's it's just because I'm think I'm doing so much more now. I guess that I don't know. Maybe you're a pretty good fan still. 
oh yeah 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 but like i can't remember like oh yeah they did fight or oh yeah he lost like you know what i mean yeah then oh yeah he was on that card that's like trying to remember every sport that's like trying to remember every basketball game Right? It's tough. That's ridiculous. It's tough, dude. No it's, average person just does that. And more and more fights are being put together as time goes yeah, on. Yeah, dude, dude, it's totally not. You're right. I won't be so hard on myself. 100%. That's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, tell me every baseball game they have in this season. That'd be crazy. 100%. All right, so back to it, back to it, back to it, back to it. So he got between that. Draco Rodriguez or Eamon Zahavi? I got, got Draco Rodriguez. Cause, and I God. was just looking at his age, and I was just like 24, and the 33-year-old got knocked out and decision loss. He can get it again. How do you think Draco wins? Oof, see, uh, it's going to be a knockout. It'll be a knockout. You got a knockout? I got it by sub. The guy hasn't lost, so Amin Zahabi, he hasn't lost by submission yet. And he's got two wins by sub. This is the time he's going to lose by submission. Because Draco's got four submissions. Let's go. I'm doing that kind of math. I'm going with that. Yeah. <laughs> He, that math is wrong, by the way. Don't, don't. If you gamble, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I got you. He's still your pick, though. Yeah, he's still my pick. I gotta go, Draco. All right, next, featherweight, Chase Kelly versus Jamal Emmers. I feel like you're gonna be mad at me. I feel like I picked the same guy as you. I know we gotta be different. I'm not. I'm just. Gonna, I'm going. I'm going Chase Kelly over Pretty Boy Jamal Emmers. Who you got? I got Chaz Kelly. Yeah, Chaz Kelly. What do I say, Chase? Yeah, it's just I want to say Chase all the time. Chaz Kelly. Chaz Kelly. Yeah, you like you you like Chaz Kelly. Yeah, he's gonna get it, dude. He's gonna be nineteen and three coming up here. And the UFC seven three and one. He's lost to tough dudes: Jason Knight, Darren Elkins, Masad Beltic. Darren the Bectic. Damage Elkins beat him. Okay, yeah. that's all I have to say. I like Jason Knight too. I was sad when the UFC cut him. Yeah. Yeah, I was bummed. Then he went to Bare Knuckle. I forget, I don't know what he's doing now. Jeez. But I liked Jason Knight. Uh, his so Chase Kelly last fought and won against Jared Griffin in 2019. So it's been a minute since he's fought. Uh, pretty boy Jamal Emmers. He's 18 and five. He's one and one in the UFC. He last fought and won against Vincent Cachero. Lost. Ooh, he beat Vincent Cachero. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. This is changing your pick. Uh, it's okay if it does. This, this is your time. If you're ooh, gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm this is your time pick. to pick Jamal Emmers now. I'm now you're going Jamal. Jamal. Emmers. That's a good victory. He's 18 and five, man. They're That's both a good win. Again, so far, all three of these fights, they're all similar. 11 and two, 11 and four, seven and two, seven and one, 18 and three, 18 and five. These are close records. That Chiroz guy that he beat. Yeah. That's some pretty good one. These are tough fights to pick from. Yeah, I switched. If Jamal I was Emmers. betting, this be a little tough. This be a little bit tough betting night. Sorry, Chaz. I switched. I'm keeping Chaz. All you haters out there for me butcher names, go fuck yourself. No, I'm just kidding. Just wait till the next fight. It's such a slam dunk easy hit prediction. Ooh, are you talking about Shanna Dobson versus <laughs> yeah. Casey O'Neill? Yes, I am talking about that, that. Who are you going with? Oh, my God. I'm going with Casey O'Neill. 5-0. and oh, Young Buck got it. But Shanna Dobson, Brennan, she was she about that, to be five. She's about to be 4-5. and five. She had that comeback win. She last fought and won against that Mariah... I forget. I don't even know. But by TKO, and if she it was, it was a comeback. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And she was an underdog. Six and zero coming up. But our girl Dobson's two and three in the UFC. <laughs> and but hey, this is Casey O'Neill's UFC debut, bitch. What happens if a UFC debut gets spoiled? <laughs> this could happen. This yeah. is possible. By a person who's experienced in the UFC, you gotta remember she's two and three, so she's been under them lights five times, baby. Confidently, I'm going with Casey O'Neill still. Yeah, I pick Casey O'Neill too. I'm sorry, Dobson. Yeah. <laughs> you know she fought Roxanne in an expedition match. Really? Yeah, she yeah. lost. Roxanne's a gangster, dude. She's beat some good people. Oh yeah, yeah. She's my girl. Shout out Roxanne. She's upset people. Yeah. Just put fucking Macy Barber in her place. I, I yeah, you're right. No, yeah. I'll wear that one till it die. Till I die. She got wrecked, dude. Yeah. Roxanne can do nothing for the rest of her career, but wrecking Macy Barber like that. Got yeah, there's not. She can do no wrong. Whatever. No wrong. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, the next one's exciting though. Nate, uh, that Nate Landwehr guy. He's kind of old. I think he's like thirty-two or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was that guy that won against your boy Darren Elkins, 
and he was going around, Dana, Dana. Do you remember that, mm-hmm. Dana? Yeah. He was fun. I'm excited to see him win fight, not win though, because I picked Julian Arosa. Oh, damn it, I picked him too, man. So far we're the same. Fuck. He's 24 and eight. He's, he's, he's got way more experience. He's two and three in the UFC. That's not that good either, though. He's 24 and nine, though. He's fought a Nate, lot of people. Nate's one and one in the UFC. Yeah, he has fought a lot of people. He's got ten, and Julian's got ten wins by TKO, eleven by sub, three by decision. He's lost by KO four times. Four so times he could get soon. knocked out still. Yeah, and that was a good fight. Darren Elkins is tough, dude. Like he's called the damage for a reason. One hundred percent. You have to kill that fucking guy. You do, dude. So that's an interesting fight. Yeah. I'm excited for it mm-hmm. just because of the the energy that guy brought in his last fight. So I am looking forward to that fight. He's going to knock him out. Hey, Dana. Oh, that'd be crazy. He lost to Herbert Burns. Isn't that Gilbert Burns' brother? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he had, his career got as it took off no, as much. No. But still, he was tough. So, unfortunately, I'm going Julian Rosa. How do you think that one that goes? He's got some crazy submissions. He's got a bulldog choke that he did in another cage sports. So he and another thing, Julian came from Dana White Contender Series. A lot of Contender Series guys fighting t- tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. I got unanimous decision. Unanimous decision. Yeah. So it's interesting. He won Contender Series, right? Then he got on the UFC, lost three in a row. Oh my God! Kicked from the UFC. Then he goes to cage sports, wins by a bulldog submission. Then back to the UFC, beats Sean Woodson by a Barboa choke. Bravo choke. I said Barboa. Bravo. Mm -hmm. B-R-A-B-O. I don't even know what the fuck that is, and I don't remember. Wow, well, it sounds pretty What's a Bravo choke? Please tell me in the comments. I'm gonna look I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. look it up after this after the pod. Yeah, dude, I will too. Yeah, I'm like, damn. So now we're ignorant and we don't know. Yeah, that's okay. It's cool though. We'll learn. Yeah. I didn't have time to go back. I, there were some videos I wanted to go back and watch, like some fights. Just mm. be like, oh shit, like, oh I remember this fight really well. But I didn't have time. I feel you, man. Shit happens. Bravo choke. I might not even still be saying it right. So our boy got that. Now he's back in the UFC, right? Now he's back. Well, he got he did oh, that yeah. when he came back in the UFC. So he's on one fight, one streak back in the UFC. We'll see, dude. We'll see. That's a good fight. Let's get, it's a featherweight fight. Let's go. All right. Oh, the next one's interesting. Next one's interesting because it's Eddie Wyland's first fight back since getting knocked out by Sean. So that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm rooting for Eddie. Bantamweight matchup, him versus John. We picked the same again. I know it. Casanada. Did I say that? Yeah. Casanada. K- John Castanada. He's 17-5. and five. He's 0-1 in the UFC. Yeah. Last fought to and lost to Nathaniel Wood. Debut jitters, man. Yeah. And the, Nathaniel Wood's an up-and-comer. He's okay. He's decent. Um, He's got six wins by KO, six by sub, five by decision. He's got one loss by KO and four by decision. So he's been knocked out. He's lost by decision a lot. He's got a lot of, he's got a lot of decent amount of subs. The 0-1 in the UFC is tough. Eddie Wyland, dude, he's been in the game since 2011. He's been just doing work. He's, he's fighting a guy who know, who knows already what it's like to lose and is probably just getting better. He's 24-14-1. and 14 and 1. Four and eight in the UFC. It's a little. That's rough. He's twenty nine. Yeah. Eddie Wineland's thirty six. Twenty nine's like peak age too, Dude, man. If, if Eddie loses, he could potentially get cut. I don't know how many are left on his contract. He's been in the game a long time. Yeah. But four and eight. If he lost this fight, that's four and nine in the UFC. Every dog has to four hang it nine. up eventually, dude. Uh, I like Eddie. Oh yeah, dude. R- respect on his name. Yeah. He's a good fighter. He's got a lot of wins by TKO, 15. Mm-hmm. Four by sub, four by decision. Again, last loss to our boy Sean. Yeah, who was a, and come on, that's a tough fight to take. Man. Part of me thinks that I think. I still got John Castanato winning. Oh, that's who you're going with? Mm-hmm. Here's our first one. I'm going Eddie. I'm going Eddie. No. He's going to get this one. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> Knockout. I gotta, I gotta root for Eddie because he just lost. You know what I mean? Maybe first round. I gotta knockout. be nice to him. It's gonna be a first round knockout. Yeah. Oh, I think I got it mixed up. I think Drakkar Klaus is the guy who's boys with Sean. Oh really? Yeah. I Dude, well, oh my God! But look who he's fighting though. Come on. Luis Pena. 
Louis Pena is a Missouri boy. Dude, he blows my mind with the weight cuts. He looks. He did the weight cuts today, and he made weight. Dude, have you seen the picture of him yet that he posted on Instagram? Is it really bad? Dude, he looked good. He looked fine. He didn't look like he was about to die, but he just looked so thin. It's insane. His face, he looks like a complete different fucking person. And it's like, my God, you fight at that weight class? He should almost be, like, he's so tall. He could technically, if he How had... How much weight does he put back on before dude, he gets in? I don't, I don't think that much because I think he likes to stay light for making that weight cut. But he's potentially someone who could weigh a lot just because how fuck he's a tall dude. Why is he like, because wouldn't you lose Did power you, if you skinny? You know, dude, his body's just built that way. He's a badass, though. He's a fucking badass. He's a killer. Because that weight cut alone is a fight. That is a fight. Oh, man. I had Luis Pena winning that. I have Luis Pena, too. Ricard Klaus is 11-2-1, 5-2 in the UFC. Last fought and lost to Benil Darush. Benil's tough. Mm-hmm. Benil's a tough fighter. No, sh- yeah, he's definitely a tough guy. So, five and two in the UFC. That's pretty good. Luis Pena is four and three in the UFC. He last fought and lost to Kam- uh, Kamar Worthy. That's a dude coming up. Remember mm-hmm. him? He looks scary. Yeah, he does. So these ooh first fight of the night where both people are coming off a loss. Luis Pena is still young too. He's twenty seven. Uh, eight, That's time to grow. Eight and three, eleven and two. Dracar's got four wins by four TKOs, seven by decision. Luis Pena's got two by two KOs, four subs, and two decisions. And remember the that worthy fight was crazy, wasn't Lewis? Didn't Lewis have him like in a rear naked choke position for the longest time? And then finally it's the tables turned. Was that how that fight went? I'd have to replay it. We got to rewatch. Damn, it's tomorrow. I'm going to have to rewatch some fights when you get off work before the fights start. I got Luis Pena winning by a submission. By the submission? Yeah, second round. So, Dracar's never been submitted. That's interesting. Mm. He is. I like. I got to watch the uh, stare downs and see the height. Yeah. You got Lewis by submission. Dude, can you imagine the body triangle triangle Lewis Pena can put on that boy? Oh yeah. <sighs> Squeeze the life out of you. I got Lewis Pena, but I have it by decision. On that one. Next, Jared Gordon versus Danny Charvez. So, hmm. That was a tough one for me to pick. Yeah. It really was. I went with the Colombian warrior, Danny Charvez. Okay, we're split on this. He's one and zero in the UFC. He's 11 and 3. He last fought and won against TJ Brown, decision in 2020. He's got three wins by KO, one loss by sub, two by decision. Jared Gordon, he's 4 and 3 in the UFC, 16 and 4. Mm-hmm. Last one and fought Chris Fishgold by decision. So he's got six wins by KO, two subs, eight decisions, and he's been knocked out four times. Damn. Fishgold's no joke, though, too. That guy's pretty mean. True. People don't sh- watch out for Fishgold. Yeah. I know he's got a goofy-ass name. Yeah. He's a good fighter. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he came back, too, and won a fight after that. Yeah. Maybe two. Mm-hmm. No, I've seen him win fights. Yeah. Who do you got in this one? Jared Gordon. You're going Jared Gordon? Yeah, Jared Gordon. He's 16 and 4. They're pretty much the same age, 32, 33, but Jared Gordon's got more experience, still. I'm going Danny, the Colombian warrior. Mainly just because of the name. How do you I, got him winning? Knockout. I got Jared Gordon winning by knockout. Jared Gordon's getting knocked out. Jared Gordon's knocking him out in the, the first round. You think so? Mm. I guess we'll find the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> Stamping it. Ooh, hostility for the first time. All right. Next is the fun one. Andre Avlowski versus Tom Espinall. And now we're at the main card too, right? Yep. Main card starts. Tom Espinall's that dude that looks like Frank Mir. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's a rising heavyweight. He's a big dude. Yeah. He's 2-0 and in the UFC. Mm-hmm. He has some, he has some good uh, TKO wins. Yeah, he does. He's deadly. But then you got fucking Andre, dude. Andre's he's, last fight was like, he, he did a great job and he was smart, but it wasn't like... 30-19. and 19. UFC record, 20-13. and 13. He went... He's got a fun story of fighting in the UFC. Dude, his UFC debut, 
UFC 28. Let's go. They're still around. That's a dinosaur. UFC 28. Just think about that. Yeah, he's 47 years old. My God. 47 years old, and he's fighting a 27-year-old. We should be, like, dressed nice when we watch Andre Vlasky fight, when we watch those people fight. What if some people actually get more badass the older they get? Look some? at Busta Rhymes. <laughs> he's more massive than ever. He's a that monster. A, that came out of nowhere, Busta Rhymes. Have you seen him? No. He's giant. I don't think anyone's seen Busta Rhymes. <laughs> yeah, he's massive. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. Chunky or? Like a, like ripped. Oh, ripped. Good like, for him. No, no, like he's a b- muscled out dude. It's crazy. Really? Interesting. He makes Dr. Dre look like little little Dr. Dre. I hope Dr. Dre's doing okay after that fucking oh, brain injury. I did, oh, gosh. Forgot about that. I haven't I, heard much. I did too. I did and then too. apparently it was all because of like his wife. Like I, I don't think it was. Never mind. I take that back. I assumed because he's going through a divorce. And apparently it was like real. It's been like a problem. And then he had that brain aneurysm. Stress can cause that shit, dude. Hey, two words. Suge Knight. Oh, nah. all right. Let's get back to the fight. We're going down a crazy, crazy rabbit hole. Yeah, I should. Yeah. Back to Andre Ravlowski, a legend. You made his UFC debut at 28. He goes 10 and four, leaves the UFC. I don't, I forget the story. Did he got cut? I forget. I don't know. There's a story to it. 10 and four, leaves the UFC. Literally goes and fights everywhere in every fucking organization. You name it, he fought in it. Comes back, 2014, beats Brendan Schwab. Ugh. I was a huge Brendan Schwab fan when he when he, when he he was on that ride. Yeah. And then he just lost to everyone. I was like, ugh. Andre's a good fighter. He is. He is. And then he returns. He goes 10-9-1. Has a, uh, I forget what the one was. Turnover or some shit like that. I forget. But uh, now he's on a two-fight two win streak. Last fought and won against Tanner Bozer. Remember that guy? Yes, Tanner Bozer. I yeah. like Tanner Bozer. Yeah. So, and then Tom Espinel, man, I know he's just he's too known in the UFC with the elbows and the knees. He can knock you out with anything. Mm-hmm. He's nine and two. Yeah. I got him winning. You got him winning? I'm going with Andre. I'm going with Andre sticking it to the young unexperienced blood. He's been sir Andre's simply been like passing time and like outpointing people and being a smart fighter Mm -hmm. this guy's gonna come in and be dangerous you know what fight this kind of reminds me of jds and tai tuivasa oh shit and you're saying jds is freaking andre arlovsky uh, and you're saying tawi talvasa's tom aspinala you're tripping maybe but i feel it that gap's not i feel it we'll see we'll see dude i like that actually but <coughs> or maybe I have it completely backwards and then we see Andre get wrecked like we watched him get wrecked in Chicago live against Tai Tuivasa. <laughs> Tom's throwing bombs, okay? First round knockout. He is the up and comer. I got a lot of first round knockouts coming. He is up. the up and comer. I Tonight. should be picking Tom if I was smart, but I'm going with the legend. I'm sticking with that legend. I have to. Yeah. All right, next. Boom. This one is interesting. The middleweight fight between Phil Hawes and. The I don't know how to say is Nasarine Amovov Am Amovov 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 Yeah I like that dude mm-hmm. That's who I got winning But I'm so, where, where the guy uh, Phil Megatron Hawes mm-hmm. He's nine and two He's two and zero in the UFC Again from the Dana White Contender Series Last fought and won Jacob Malcrum mm-hmm. I forget that fight Do you remember that fight No I don't remember that There's fight There's so many fights dude. Again. Like baseball or basketball. It was on the Justin and Khabib card. That's a good card, too. That was was a good card. Was it on the main main card? I forget. (laughs) Damn. I forget. There's a lot of fights. The Khabib Justin just overrode my memory. That was the biggest fight of that card. Ugh. But, uh, how do you say Nasreen Amvav? Mm hmm. Last fought and won against Jordan Williams. Decision. He's got three fights by KO, four sub, two decision. One sub loss and one decision loss. The other dude's been knocked out and submitted. 
Phil Hawes is winning. You're you're, you're going Phil Hawes? Yeah, I got Phil Hawes. Why why Megatron? I'm just feeling Megatron. There's something about you're it. You're feeling something about Megatron? I've been picking the younger guys a lot of the time, but I think this time, for some mm. strange reason, his age is going to help him out on this. Phil Hawes. I'm going with the Nasserine guy because I liked his fight. I liked him. Yeah, he's going to be sad when he loses. All right. There we go. We got some opposites. That makes me happy. All right, what's next? What we got next, We got heavyweights now. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, dude. And this one's going to be crazy. Dude, this is a good fight. The fucking boa constrictor, Alexi Olenek. Yeah, look how many fights this man's had. 59 and 14. 8 and 5 in the UFC. It's pretty good. Yeah. In the heavyweights. That is good in the heavyweights, Uh, for sure. 8 and 5, he's beat 8 heavyweights. He he last fought and lost to Derek Lewis. Ouch, who's headlining. Yeah. That hurts. Yeah. What a tough guy to do that. Derek Lewis is no Yeah, I joke. lost to that guy. I'll go fight on his card. That happens a lot. That's tough. Who do you got winning that? Oh, I got Alexi. He's fighting Chris Dacruz. 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 I remember that because I was like, oh, my God. Well, it doesn't look like what it's sa- like how it's spelled for, yeah. for us. But I think, I you know, f- it's like a different. Damn, he's 2-0 and in the UFC, both by KOs. Yeah, Dacruz. 10-3. Nine wins by KO, one decision. Chris Dacos is winning in my books. I got, dude. I got the boa constrictor. It goes on the ground. This guy's fucked. Alexi Olenek. I've seen him get dude. wrecked. Notable wins: Werdum, Maurice Green, Mark Hunt, Travis Brown. Come on. What is about his losses? His notable losses: Derek Lewis, Walt Harris, Overeem, Curtis Blades. Ooh. Those are tough guys. Overeem wrecked them. Tough dudes, all of them. Overeem's the biggest indicator to me. He's the best gatekeeper in the world. He's a legend. <laughs> legend that legend to Overeem. But when he beats somebody that's coming up, you usually know they're not ready for the next level. I'm going to Lexi. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go Boa Constrictor. Chris Dackhouse winning. His shit's nasty, dude. You know how Chris Dackhouse is winning? How? Knockout. First no. round. I got, I've got. i got first round knockouts going all night, dude. Boa Constrictor, he's submitting this dude. This dude's getting Putting slept. It on it. Knockouts. But, boom. All right, 12. Charles Rosa, Derek Minor. I got I got Derek Minor winning. Yeah, Derek Minor. Yeah, he's 25 and 11 compared to Char- Charles Rosa's 13 and 4. Uh, I I just see the They're both even in the UFC. Charles Rosa's 4 and 4. Derek's 1 and 1. Yeah, I just see the uh, fights from the outside and just his general experience edging out. Derek last fought and won against TJ Lamari and he won submission by submission. My guy, I'm going with Charles Rosa. Uh, he last fought and won against Kevin Aguilar by decision. He's got three wins by KO, eight submissions, two decisions. But you, your dude, Derek Miner, he's got 22 submission wins. That's crazy. Yeah. It's going to be a decision. Decision? Yeah, he's going to try to get a submission but not be able to get one. It's going to be a decision. He's been submitted eight times too, your boy. <laughs> oh damn! Yeah, fights are crazy. I put both. Guess what? Guess what? Ask me how many times Charles Rose has been submitted. Zero. Zero. And I said he's not getting submitted. It's a decision. Nope. Because he's gonna be defending the Charles, whole time. Charles Rosa. If he's defending the whole time, he can't get any points. Charles Rosa submission. Charles Rosa. <laughs> okay, well we're against on that one. All right, boom. Next. Caitlin Vieira versus this is a fun fight. I like this fight. Caitlin Vieira versus Yana. Ku, my friend was making fun of her. <laughs> yeah, there. this is what I was thinking Kutsinkaya. about. Kutsinkaya. Kutsin, shout out Bedside. Kutsinkaya or Kuntitskaya. Bedside or Jime Time. They were both giving me shit about it. Kutsinkaya. And well, the first it's pr- yeah. It's a it's a fun word to say. Anyway, I'm going Caitlin Vieira. She's 11 and 1. 5 and 1 in the UFC. She lost to Irene Alneda. She's a beast mm. by KO. Uh, she last fought and won against Saja and Bronks and Bonks and Banks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's beat Kat Singano, Sarah McMahon, Ooh. Ashley Evans Smith. Okay. These are tough girls. Yeah, you're right. Caitlin Vera, let's go. Yana, dude. She last fought and won against Julia, Julia, Stroller. I fuck me, Stroller Larkinko. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is that it though? Probably that, not. You got listed on there. Oh yeah, it's on there. And she's lost to uh, she lost to Aspen Lad. Aspen Lad's pretty good. Aspen Lad's pretty good. Aspen Lad's also been beat too, though. So it's kind of a good indicator of like I'm not too worried for 
Yana's thirteen and five, three and two in the UFC. Three and two in the UFC. Ooh, My girl's be, five and one. Could be three and three in the UFC. Really I'm soon. going Caitlin. Me too. Caitlin. Yeah, Caitlin, right? Caitlin. Caitlin is it, wow. I'm saying Caitlin is Caitlin. Caitlin. K E T L E N. Caitlin. Caitlin Vera. And then Yanza Kuntitskaya. Yanza Kuntitskaya. I'll never be able to work for the UFC if I fuck up names like this. But you know what? You practice it. They even fuck up names. They fucked up. We fucked up Francis Nugano's name forever. Even the pros. What's a, what is it? Francis Nugano. That's what it is. But they were saying all sorts of shit in the beginning. I always said Francis Nugano. Yeah. The whole time. Dude, they said some shit. Yeah. Even, yeah. <laughs> I'll master it one day. Well, we got Catlin. We got Catlin winning. Catlin. How's, how's she winning? Oh, dude, knockout. A knockout? Oh, yeah. Or, mm, if it's a knockout, what round? Submission. I'm taking it back. Submission. She's got four by submission. You know what? I'm calling it the craziest night. I'm UFC. playing numbers game tonight. Craziest night in UFC history. First round knockout, Catlin. Catlin? Stamping it. I'm going by the numbers game tonight. That's what game I'm playing. Yeah. That's what the game I'm Schmitty's playing. I'm playing crazy night. I'm playing game the numbers night. All right, main event, dude. I'm excited for this one. Curtis Blades, Derek Lewis. This is ex- fucking exciting. You know what's weird? Curtis Blades, 14-2. and 9-2-1 and two and one in the UFC, right? Mm-hmm. He's this big wrestler, right? Mm-hmm. He's got, I don't know if it's the most takedowns in the heavyweight division or if he's tied or if he's got almost there. He's got a lot. But he's got no submission wins. Brendan, Derek Lewis, if you're not going to submit Derek Lewis, he's just going to get up. Mm-hmm. He's just, just He just does that thing where he just stands up and he gets up, and it's – and he can do it. He's going to knock him out. You think Derek Lewis is going to knock out Curtis Blades? It's going to be a first-round knockout. That's what I th- I'm starting to think it might happen. That's all the energy from all these first-round knockouts I'm calling. It's getting generated from this one. You think so? This is the one that's like, this is why. A part of me is just like, man, if Curtis can keep Derek down, it's over. It's going to be over. Because Derek will eventually be able to get up, but then it'll, it'll just keep coming. And if if he can hold him down and not just get up whenever he wants, mm-hmm. that's going to be a long, tough night for Derek, especially I'd five rounds. Ouch. What if Curtis knocks out Derek Lewis? How crazy would that be? It could happen. Anything could happen in the heavyweights. True. It would be crazy. Anyway, that poster is going to be night of the knockout. You better get it now, man, because that one it's oh, going to be the craziest night, brother. I wish the B-dubs gave out those fight night posters. Yeah. That'd be sick. It's only pay-per-view. You got so you got Curtis winning. The smart my money would be on Curtis. My soul wants Derek. I think Derek could get the knockout. It just depends. So Curtis again, fourteen two nine two and one in the UFC. Um, the only one guy that's beat this dude, Francis Nugano. It's the only guy to beat Curtis Blades. He's beat Volkov. He's beat Dos Santos. Mm-hmm. He's beat over. He's him. good. He's a he's good fighter. He's beat Mark Hunt. Derek Lewis just is like he's a weirdo. Yeah. Okay, he comes in and you don't know. But Derek Lewis, dude, fifteen and five in the UFC, fifteen and five. That's pretty good. That's damn good in the UFC. Yeah, dude, he's lost to JDS, DC, Mark Hunt, Matt Mitrione. Okay, but, uh, the Mark Hunt and the Matt Mitrione, those are probably the learning where he he needed to probably get better. Yeah. But how about this? He's on a three fight win streak, dude. Dude, Olenek, Lair Latifi, and that Balognov, Ivanov. Mm-hmm. I forget how to he say. beat all those guys. All in the last three, and those all three, like those were guys were on a roll or up and coming, doing really well. Mm-hmm. Tough fucking dudes. Yeah. And Derek Lewis beat all three of them. He's on a roll. He's on a fucking roll. And he's gonna be continuing that roll. I don't know, man. Steam rolling through. If I'm putting money on a fight, I'm putting money on the on Curtis. Okay. How's he finishing? It would be. It's gonna be by decision. By decision. Okay. Yeah. Kurt, if uh, Derek Lewis wins, it's gonna be by knockout. It's gonna be a first round knockout. Yeah, coming up. That would be so insane. Stamped. That would be so insane. I'd lose my shit. Yeah, I hope it all happens because I'm talking all this shit right now. Oh, I'm dude. bold on these. I uh, couldn't even pronounce half these fighters' fucking names tonight. I got these predictions down. It's still a great card. I'm excited. God, I can't wait. It, yeah, any oh. night with 14 fights is lit, dude. And yeah, it's just a good card all around. Good night of fights. A lot of people from Tuesday night contender series. Ooh, my bad. And then just overall, man, we got after this fight, next week, bang. 
After that, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, yeah let's get it. Let's yeah. get these fight fight uh, predictions down. Yeah. Any last words? Oh, no. Do you wanna, is there anything else that you have that no? you want to talk about? Is there anything else you want to talk about? We could talk about the Mortal Kombat trailer. Oh, fuck. We never did talk about Mortal Kombat. Because uh, I think it looks pretty bad. <laughs> See? In a good way. I'd still yeah, enjoy watching it. it. Looks I'd like still a enjoy watching pleasure it. Pleasure movie. Exactly. Doesn't it? It looks really stupid. Doesn't but it? But like fun at the same time. Well, you love Cobra Kai. Oh, I'm gonna get hate on that one. I'm gonna get some hate. I don't think that should just get hate. Dude. Everyone loves it. Everyone's like, oh my god, I love Cobra Kai. I'm the only one that's out here like. Well, this Cobra is the Kai is. Shit. Right. This is the corniest shit in the world. And it's got good family values, dude. Things you should learn. Wisdom to impart. Okay. <laughs> he teaches more than just wax on, wax off. Well, He's then shouldn't you feel that way about Mortal Kombat? Because that shit looked corny as hell, but I'm sure there's Well, some Mortal Kombat of... doesn't have any meaningful lessons to teach He's you. He's got a tattoo, and he's trying to defend something and find his meaning. Yeah, it was sounding really bad. Yeah. I don't know. It looks like it has everything, dude. A part of it's like some CGI looks really good on it, and then some of it looks just really bad. And then the cheesiness with the writing and everything, it's like, oh, What about God. production during COVID? Yeah. I'm going to watch it. Dude, HBO Max is sick. If you guys don't have HBO Max, get that shit because it's going to have all the movies this year. That's the way to go. Dude, and another thing about that, I was just watching the news the other day, and the do- there's this dog called, uh, oh, my God, I forget his name. He's he's from Kansas City, though, and he was a homeless dog. Uh-huh. And then this town ho- Hollywood scout picked him up, and now he's crypto on freaking Titans on HBO Max. As a dog? As the dog. Huh. Yeah, dude. And this dog was a freaking in a homeless shelter. That's pretty cool. And it's a cute-ass dog, man. Too bad it doesn't even know. His name's Crypto on the show. He has no fucking And he's got a Superman cape, and they showed a couple scenes with his laser eyes. He's just much happier because he's not fucking straight. Dude, he's a smart-ass dog, dog too, it seems, you know? Like, he takes directions really well. Oh, that's really cool. Dude, I want to get a dog so bad. His name was Pepsi. Pepsi? His dog's name was Pepsi. That's a cool name. Yeah, dude. I'm happy I remembered that. I was like, oh, my God, he's got a cute name, too. And he had a Kansas City uh, I'm thinking about if I get a dog, I'm like, would I name him Frodo? I love Lord Dude, that's a lit-ass name for a dog. Right? Well, dogs can have goofy names. <laughs> well, I love Lord of the Rings so much. I'd be like, Frodo. If people name their, like, children like they name their dogs, think yeah. about all the crazy names you'd have. And I can't do Legolas since fucking Ricky has his name as Legolas. Dude, a kid should have a name. I mean, not Legolas, Gandalf. How badass would you feel if your name was Gandalf? I'd mean, be pretty cool. Like you were born with that name. Like I you wouldn't name my it. dog Gandalf, but since Ricky did, I can't. My s- cousin with the same name as me. Two Ricky Schmidts in the world. There should only be one. I know. Eventually, you guys are going to have to end it. I know. Just fucking duel it out. <laughs> to the death. Yep. There can only be one Ricky Schmidt. But I was thinking, Frodo. I want to get a dog. 2021 is going to be the year where I get a dog. 100%. 100%. And his name's going to be Frodo? Possibly. There's lots of names I got. What if I named it O'Malley? Would that be weird? <laughs> I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. It's weird cool. Weird cool? You said weird, so now it's weird. Now it's weird? When you say it's weird, it's weird. I'd be like, O'Malley! You'd be like, man, call your dog after me? Yeah, some other people did too. Some dudes got a tattoo on him. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'd do that. Honestly, it's still a cool name, though. It'd be dope, yeah. right? O'Malley? O'Malley? O'Malley, get your fucking ass inside! There's so many possibilities, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You could even name him Batman. That'd I know, dude. Great. Dog names are cool. Hey, Batman. We had fun talking. It was a good time. It was a good time. Hopefully the viewers had a good time. Yeah, Thank you guys for watching. It means a lot. We're just out here chasing our dreams during fucking last part of COVID, hopefully. Who fucking knows where this world's going? Mm. Chase your fucking dreams. Chase some dreams and watch some fights. Let's yeah. get it. Watch these fights. Um, enjoy them. Love the people you're with. Deuces. <laughs>